You can call me Irene as well. And I'm running a color con corn silk. So it's a light yellow color. And my slogan is rolling with rolling. Cool. And your degree in your study? Oh, and economics, third year economics student. Cool. Yes. Um, and just by way of an icebreaker, we're asking all the candidates this. What's your favorite USU production of recent times? The USU production? Mm -hmm. The the crystal ball? So like um, like a Suds play or like a review or like... Oh, the review. Oh, you mean like the that. like activity mm -hmm. that... I think Club and Quiet. Uh, I mean Club and Societies. No, no, no not program Sorry. like... Um, for example, like, mm -hmm. you know, there's like POC review, women's yeah. review, or like a SUDS play. Oh, or like international review. Yeah, have you like seen that. anything like that yeah. recently? Yeah, my campaign manager, he's part of the international review. Cool. Yeah. And that's your favorite? Yeah, I guess that makes mm -hmm. me, yeah. Cool. Um, all right, moving on. Are you a member of any political parties? No. No? Um, in that case, how would you describe your political philosophy? Uh, I think before I'm running this, Politics is something very far away with me, mm -hmm. but I guess like every time when I said, "Oh, I'm running for USU," and people's like, "Oh, you are those sort of people like doing politics," mm -hmm. and that made me like kind of very surprised because how people will see this group of people. Mm -hmm. So um, I see, um, I say, um, at the end of the day, no matter what's what the political philosophy you have. What we want to do is to serve students better. So mm. we really need to put our their like political disputation aside and actually do things rather mm. than you know play politics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so um, I've just learned a word. It's called political neutral. So that's what I would describe myself. Okay. Um, yeah. If I were to put it this way, if you had to pick, for example, a major Australian party or a minor party mm. that you sort of identify with the most yeah. is there one that stands out no, i i don't think i would i first i don't know them quite well mm -hmm. so i think it's it's too early to draw conclusions that oh, i'm like with any party mm -hmm. so um i guess make me like running for this campaign will make me like exposing this environment more mm -hmm. so I will have more chance to know the people from different party from different group mm -hmm. and um, maybe I would know like what's their stand for so um, um, yeah. I guess maybe to but, frame things slightly differently you're an economic student yeah would you say just broadly you're in favor of higher or lower taxes high or low taxes mm -hmm. I definitely would say like low tax because as a student I don't owe much so okay yeah. And are you sort of generally in favor of like free market principles or um, or sort of like uh, state-sponsored approaches to? Um, I'm sorry, I don't quite familiar with this. Are you um, are you a supporter of, for example, wealth, but, welfare, public welfare? Yeah, but if you are trying to like making me, I I know where why your question comes from because um, you're trying to have a like profile on me about like whether. You can say like because my international background, mm -hmm. I'm an immigrant. Mm -hmm. So yes, I definitely care about like the how minority will be treated in this on this society on our community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Um, in that case, would you say you're, uh, for example, pro immigration? Yes, I will say because that's I think that's a group that I comes from. Okay. That I come from. Yeah. Okay. Um, Okay, moving on from that, um, have you um, previously been, you, you said you're, you're fairly new to politics, do you have any kind of previous involvement in student politics at all? Have you campaigned for any uh, student elections or have you supported any candidates in the past? I campaigned for um, last SRC, because um, that's um, my campaign manager, Daniel Hu, mm -hmm. he ran the SRC campaign. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for events. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and what led you to campaign for Daniel? Was it mainly just the fact that he was a friend, or did you identify with some of his policies? I think more importantly, um, he's a friend, and I I know him really well, and I know like he's a very competent candidate. So that made me decide to help him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, cool. So. Uh, um, is that is that kind of the extent of your involvement in student politics? You've not 
been a member of a faction? You haven't no. been a member of Advance? Um, no. I, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, did you consider joining a faction or running with a faction? Was running as an independent a deliberate choice for you? or? This is actually a very good question because I decided to run this campaign pretty early. I think it's from like last year. Mm -hmm. So when I express my intention and there yes there's some like student group trying to find me and said oh you can run with us mm -hmm. but um, I said no because um, based on my understanding I, I don't think like the we are like like a perfect match mm -hmm. so and I I want to like if I'm lucky enough get elected I want to on board can vote on my conscience and I I think the, the people sitting on board should have their, with their integrity, not like doing, you know, mm -hmm. for other political parties' favor. So I, I would say I, that's why I'm running for as an independent candidate. Do you mind mentioning which uh, faction it was that was inviting you to run? No, it's just like about the a friend talk. So maybe he's from a different party and he's like, oh, you maybe can join us because we are gonna run somewhere. Anyway, which faction was that? Uh, I rather not to, but they are all students, so it's not a political party. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, I hand over to you, Alan. Sure. Um, you've obviously had some affiliation with Advance. Yes. Um, and you continue to do so with Daniel, who is your campaign manager. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a current SRC councillor. Yeah. Um, and will be until the end of your USU campaign as yes. well. Um, do you think running as an independent rather than as someone affiliated with a faction like Advance increases your chances of winning? Do I think uh, running with a political or like a with hell of a affiliation with some party will increase the chance? Do you think running as an independent yeah. rather than being affiliated oh, increases your No, chance? actually I've been told that I made such a bad decision every time they're saying you miss a good opportunity and you are, you didn't make a smart choice that because running on your all own you are very like has a very limited resource about like that yes so yeah instead of like saying that lots of people said I made a bad decision but yeah that's my decision so um, just adding something about that question yes um like events they approach me but I just decide to run on my own yeah and also because. I also um, watched the video from last year, the interview. So I, I understand like the question came from because some people they definitely with the, some political affiliation by saying they are running independent, but they are not very like actually running independent. Mm -hmm. So that's very unfortunate. They are like st stealing the advantage of being an independent candidate. Also having like other people thinking they are independent, voting for an independent candidate. So I think that's what they are doing is very unfortunate. But yeah, so I just want on uh, one day if I'm sitting on the board, I want to vote on my own conscience. That's the whole. Sure. Yeah. You just told us that Advance approached you uh, to run with them as an advanced candidate for the. Uh, board election this year, mm -hmm. um, but we've heard something different. We heard rumors that uh, De Cheng yep. uh, actually asked Benny Shen to run as the mm -hmm. advanced candidate yep. and refused to ultimately back your campaign as yes. an advanced candidate. Is there any truth to those rumors? Yes, uh, because I guess it's because um, I said no earlier. So yeah, that's that's reasonable. So yeah, that's okay. So uh, yeah, was, so I was surprising that when I read Honey Swart saying, "Oh, I'm an events candidate," I was like, "Oh, did he change his mind or something like that?" But yeah. So so Di Cheng initially uh, approached you, and then when you refused him, he then approached Benny. I think that's the story I know. Sure. Yeah, I'm okay. not so sure about um, the whole part of the story. Sure. Yeah. Um, and I, also, I, that's uh, Benny told me he said, yeah. Okay. I guess more generally, what inspired you to run to be on this the board of this multi million dollar organization? Oh, it's the answer would definitely surprise you, as I I told Alan earlier because it's just because one lot because of one lunch that I had at ABS, mm -hmm. and this is ginger fish with rice because I was study at ABS that day and I didn't have lunch until like three o'clock, 
and my friend told me, oh, why don't you grab some lunch from ABS Cafe? And I, I said, oh, probably not because I don't think campus food is that good. I'd rather like be hungry than having that food. And then she's like, no, you have to try this. Today we have bean ginger fish with rice. And she even said, oh, you better run fast in, like, in case they sell out. And I start to like hesitate, is that really that good? So I just go get one ginger fish with rice and then brought that with my friend. And I taste it, it actually tastes so good. Have you tried? No, no. You know, you, you definitely should go, to, go there and try. And um, so there's another, I just, I was wondering like, what made they change this like food? So there's one friend told me, um, there's one board of director, she made this change. Mm. And that's the first time I heard USU, this organization, this name. And that's the moment like, I immediately fall in love with this organization, what they can do. Because as a student, I have experienced many times that we are there just for to advise them. We can't make any decision. It's up to like the university, the, the other people. Like It's up to them whether to listen or not. Sure. Yeah. So what USU can do is they can actually make a change. That's the most charming part to me. And when did you say that happened? I think it's about like last semester, like the very beginning of the semester. So and halfway through Friday. last year. Yeah. 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 Sure. Uh, if you had to identify the most important USU program, mm -hmm. um, which program would it be uh, and why is it important to our students? The most important one, because there's a lot of like program that I really like, but I would definitely say it's clubbing societies because that's the first, like, that's like a, like a window. Do you, would you say like, all week is a different program? All week is a different it's, I think it's part of the clubbing society's way. Right? Yeah, so all weekend the clubbing society because when I first working this campus and what I see is from like all weekend different clubs and societies and lots of people joining this. I think that's a very, very, very important connection for every sure. student. Yeah. Um, there are a number of candidates running in this year's election. Some of them bring very much stacked resumes filled with yes. CNF's experience. Uh, one candidate running has more than seven current executive positions on classes wow, and societies. Impressive. Um, and they would say that CNF's experience is very important to running to be on board because most of the board's members are club and society executives yes. or members of clubs. Yes. Um, what sort of clubs and societies have you participated in? Um, I participated in several and it's like mentoring debating societies I joined and um, mentoring public studies and um, Project Hope and like um, women in science, yeah, all this. Sure. Um, in terms of that comment from other candidates that uh, CNS experience is the most important uh, thing to have for a CNS, CNS yeah, club, club and society societies. experiences, yeah. most important to a USU candidate, mm -hmm. uh, do you think you have that CNS experience, or, or do you think it's the most important thing you need to have? As, yeah, I, I see the question, like how your question comes from. Do you, are you just suggesting because they are holding like executive positions that make them a, a, like a very good candidate for your No, I'm asking you what you think about. Yes, uh, that's, that's, because I think like being a board of director, there's not a specific ingredient make you a perfect match. And yes, I don't hold any executive position in the club and societies, but I join a few. And um, I think first, because um, even though I'm not holding an executive position, but I was still like helping them holding band. I don't think that's something will bind you like not to participate in one societies. So I, I understand like USU board of board is like a 13 people, it's a collective decision and they all sitting there making decisions. Maybe as an executive they have the past experience to make one decision and uh, which I didn't have but I did a lot, lot, lot of like the work so I understand like how this will gonna implement. Sure. And also because I, so I think that make me a doer rather than like sitting on the board and just like 
making decisions. So I probably will go to actually talk to people, like asking what's their, asking their feedback about like any other decisions. So I will be very conscious about like the decision we're making, and also I will try to make sure our decision is is getting through uh, doing this the, the process, and also um um. Yeah, that's pretty much answer the question, I guess. Sure. Yeah. Um, a lot of candidates in the lead up to deciding to run for USU board yeah. often uh, consider how many people can support them. They often think about their clubs and societies that they're part of or yeah. colleges that they live in. Mm -hmm. um, what sort of student groups have you uh, talked to or approached? Uh, who is currently supporting you? Who do you think will support you for the election? Mm -hmm. They are basically the friend that I know from my like maybe economics class or like that. Yeah. Sure. So most mostly just friends from, from yeah. uni. Yeah. Okay. Um, as you probably know, this year's spending cap for the election is seven hundred dollars. Yeah. Do you intend to exhaust the spending cap? No, I'm I'm like a very like um, a money keeper because I'm I'm afraid that I'm gonna spend over that money. So. Yeah, I, I guess I, I'll try my best to... Oh, is it 700? Because I thought it's like 500, but plus 200, just in case you run out of that. Yeah. So the total spending cap is $700, but yeah. the USU can provide an election grant of $500 and you can self-fundraise $200 mm -hmm. up to a total of $700. Yes. Yeah. Have you received a $500 election grant? Oh, I haven't checked my bank account today, but yeah, not, not on to today. Sure. Uh, yeah. Will you be intending to raise the additional $200? No, I don't think so. Sure. Do you know if you're using A-frames, uh, which are made of wood, or core flukes, which are made of plastic? Um, I'm trying to, but I would see like if I can pull this thing up. Because it's 20 kilograms, so it's very heavy, and there's 10 of them. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can manage this. No, I said the... The A-frame, yeah. Are you using A-frames or core flutes? Core oh, flutes are made of plastic, so A-frames are made of wood. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm saying I'll see if I can manage with A-frame because I read from the, 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 poly, the booklet and they're saying every A-frame has to weight more than like 20 kilograms. So that's pretty heavy that I, I don't think I can manage that. Okay. So I just see if I can do it. Um, cool. So, kind of moving on to the other candidates, um, mm -hmm. what do you think kind of distinguishes you the most from other candidates? Obviously, a lot of other candidates have extensive um, club and society uh, experience. Um, some have experience with the SRC as councillors or office bearers. Um, what sets your candidacy apart from the other nine? Mm -hmm. First, because I didn't met them in person, like just one day that we have a, like an introductory session and I met every one of them, but I didn't know them very well by person. So I just say like my experience. So um, yeah, as I just said that I didn't held any executive position. So that may make me like very conscious about like, cautious about like the, the decision I will make. So I guess for me, every time when I make one decision, I would, I would make sure that I consult with students, with the club and societies, and with the staff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. So you would say your consult consultative approach. Yeah, and upon? and I understand like one single decision will have their influence. Just because I'm saying this, it's because this year. USU has introduced a new funding model mm -hmm. and this it, it, it is good because now access is free now but one thing is making like ha has deprived the club and societies they cut the the funding they, mm -hmm. they used to get like six dollars per person per semester but now they only have one dollar per person per, sem per semester mm -hmm. I imagine because they made this decision is because uh, access is free, so more people will join to clubbing societies, mm -hmm. which is true. They have like 27% increase in clubbing society. Mm -hmm. That's what I read from Pony. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, but this like 27% increase doesn't cover the five dollar gap, so it actually deprived lots of um clubbing many clubbing society their like current program, and 
I see like lots of people like like me, like lots of my friend doing club and societies, basically just because the pure interest, mm -hmm. like they want to serve students. So that's something very amazing. Mm -hmm. But as USU, I think we need to provide a more like supportive platform. Uh, and um, this funding model, I think it's a little, little bit lack of like student consultation. So that's why I'm saying it is very important that I will value like everyone's opinion on one like single policy. I suppose what I'm getting at though is that you know there's certain or well, there's several other candidates who have held positions uh, such as for example the treasurer mm -hmm. of various societies which is obviously heavily involved with managing finances, yeah. um, balancing budgets etc. Mm -hmm. Do you have any skills that sets you apart from candidates like that um, that kind of that can sort of assure voters that you are the best person for the job when it comes to, you know, balancing budgets or reforming um, mm -hmm. funding models. About the like balancing budget, um, I would say I did boss ten thirty, so that's a accounting subject that mm -hmm. I know how to balance um state or uh, like a financial statement or like in income statement. Mm -hmm. So that's one skills. And another one is like uh, because I'm holding one position in SRC um, as student housing officer, mm -hmm. and. Um, it is it is very hard to do things like in in a big organization because you need to have a communication to different department, different group, and so yes, I have those like sort of skills from SRC as I'm doing my like student housing office of this job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Uh, looking at the other candidates, um, which would you say you kind of share the most with, or you? identified the most with? Um, yeah, as I just said, I, I didn't know them quite well as mm -hmm. a as person, so um, I, it's, I guess they are all equally like connect, they, they are now the, now the same like distance with me. Okay, yeah. um, that's, that's, that's fine that you haven't personally met any of them, as far as sort of political um, because I also issues. haven't read their policy yet. Yeah, of course. Yeah, um, yeah even you ask, even you guys ask us to send yeah. the policy. So I haven't read their policy yet. As you'd know, that there's there's kind of a broad spectrum um, of political philosophies represented in the other nine candidates. There's two Labour candidates. There's um, a candidate who's a member of the Liberal Party. As you know, Benny Shen mm -hmm. um, is associated with Advance. Um, are there any, do any of those factions particularly stand out to you as um, factions that typically advance policies that you agree with or that you identify with? Can you see yourself, um, you know, having common ground with any of those candidates just by virtue of their um, political philosophy? Um, I think to that question, I, I might be a little bit like, I, I'd rather meet them in person and know their like how how are they? Because for me, my understanding is USU is a non-political organization. Mm -hmm. So everyone, either they are coming from a different political background, they should be like political neutral, sitting on this position without any, any bias. So, okay. so you would you would describe the USU as a non-political organization? That's what I read from the website. On okay. U is that your personal opinion? That's a statement on the website that we are like student-led non-profit, like not political organization and uh -huh. our vision is to make the best student experience in Australia. Okay. Yeah, that's, um, I, I was preparing for the for the quest so that I, I read the website. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Um, um, in that case, um, could you tell us, sort of looking at the current board, what you think have been some of its biggest shortcomings over the past year or so? The shortcoming? Mm -hmm. Oh, coming direct to, to the shortcoming. Mm -hmm. um, yes, as I just said, the funding model is mm -hmm. a bit of unfortunate. But, but I I really appreciate what they, they are doing. They are trying to push the um, free access. That's what I, I was really, really want for, like free access or like a cheaper access before. So they actually make, manage this, like make this happen. So that's something very great. But the funding model actually deprived many clubbing societies. It's making them very hard to 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 maintain their current program. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
how about um, could you name any of the sort of biggest achievements of the current board that that, that you admire? The, yeah, um, I've read there's like a verge fast forward that they are doing. They are trying to connect every camp, different campus, and I noticed this year the the polling booth they even moved to some different campus like nursing and arts and music. Mm -hmm. I have to admit it's really hard for me to manage like the campaign mm -hmm. but I like they're, they're changing they're trying to to connect different campus mm -hmm. because those campus they always think they're being ex excluded from mm -hmm. this campus mm -hmm. yeah so I say like also they're making like Verge Festival the, the same is interconnectivity mm -hmm. so yeah what they're trying to do is trying to bring like all the different campus together mm -hmm. okay You've mentioned the USU is a non-political body, that you've read that somewhere. Yeah. Um, despite the fact that it claims to be a non-political body that you've read somewhere, mm -hmm. the USU makes political decisions all the time. It yeah. makes a decision, for instance, to prioritise the environment by phasing out plastic straws in its outlets and replacing them with paper straws mm -hmm. uh, on the political rationale that believes in climate change and the impacts of environmental degradation. Yes. Um, so do you think, despite the fact that uh, you claim to be politically neutral, that you will be confronting decisions that need to be made on a political basis. Yes. Sorry, what was your question? Do you think, mm -hmm. despite being politically neutral, yeah. you will have to make decisions that are political? Yes. Um, yes, I, I'm a, a, aware of this, like there's some political decisions, even like international student concession card like that. But um, yes, because when I decide to run this campaign, I just getting realized, like aware of, oh, the polit polit politics is like everywhere. But I'm trusting this institution because this is like thirteen people. They are making a collective decision. So um, I guess if you view this organization from outside this organization should be a um, political neutral because they are like left people, right people, like labor, laborers sitting on the board, they're making a collective decision. So yeah, um, ultimately I guess it will make this organization political neutral. Students vote for candidates after reading their policies because they think some of those policies are of political benefit to them. Yeah. Um, international students might read a policy that supports the lobbying efforts for international concession cards, yes. uh, concession opal cards, to be beneficial, uh, mm -hmm. even though that requires political lobbying, that requires yes. a stance against the current model driven by the Liberal Party. Yes. Um, part of being p political is that it gives voters certainty, it gives them stability, it, it tells them what they can expect from you as a board director. Mm -hmm. Do you think that because you don't have, uh, you don't tell voters that you're political in any way that they think they might not trust you because they don't know uh, how you're going to make a decision or what values you have? Can you um, just say or what's your question? Sorry, I didn't catch your question. Do you think voters trust you to make decisions? Just because that I don't have a affiliation with a political party? Because they don't know what, it, what to expect from you, because they don't know your politics or your values. They don't know how you would approach a certain problem. Do you think they might lose trust in you? No, I don't think so. Because, um, I guess it's because of the people who are trying to, um, my, the people who will support me are basically all my friend. So they know me as a person and they know like how would I achieve things. And I don't think involving in any political party is a guarantee to pull things up because even though you involving a political party there's like many I, I, I imagine there's many like complicated relationship be between within this political party so I don't think you involving a political party is a guarantee so on the opposite in the opposite I don't think not involving in a political party will like cut my my trust like cut my cut my ability to pull this thing up yeah 
Um, I suppose sort of following off the back of that and staying on the uh, topic of uh, politics, um, um, do you think, for example, it's the place of the union to take a political stance at all? Um, a couple of years ago, the USU came out in support of the yes vote in the same-sex plebiscite. Um, the USU board was criticised last year for failing to take a stance on the proposed uh, Bachelor of Western Civilization, um, sponsored by the Ramsey Centre. Mm -hmm. um, do, you, do, you, do you think the union should ever be taking a political stance on matters like that? And if so, w w how, what kind of stance would you take um, in, in those two issues and, and in anything else that arose? So it's taking Lani and then, um, can you just like... Um, so so, so you're, you're, t you're telling voters that you're um, approaching this role mm -hmm. from a politically neutral yes. position. Mm -hmm. Say, for example, you had been on the board two years ago when the same-sex marriage plebiscite was conducted mm -hmm. uh, and the board came out in support of the yes vote. Mm -hmm. Would you have abstained from that vote? Or would you have endorsed the yes vote? Would you endorse the no vote? I will endorse the yes vote I, because I trust them. Um, the same sex. Sorry, what's what's the terminology again? The same sex marriage. Yeah. Yes. So, you, so you would take a political stance in that. Yeah. In, because in that um, I guess my philosophy is I don't think because now I didn't find a, a match with my my political philosophy. So I don't think my political view is fill in a, just like a like a, a shape and mm -hmm. filling in a specific political party mm -hmm. yeah but that doesn't mean make me have like no no opinion on some like political issues yeah. I suppose going back to what Alan was trying to ask yes in that case often it's useful for voters to know uh, to know that a candidate does sit in a particular category because they can trust that when a certain situation arises, they have a good idea of how that candidate will vote or yeah. act. Um, to reiterate what Alan was asking, do you think if your approach to handling political situations is to trust your own personal whim um, and instinct, that people m might be concerned that they don't really know what they're voting for, they don't know, they don't know what to, they don't know how to expect you to act? I think yes, that's a shortcoming for for me running this position because I, yes, just as you say, people would expect a, like a political, a people like from a political party, and they can do the things like what the political party would would do. They will follow like their philosophy, mm -hmm. but um, I don't because um, yes, I think. This is trying to have a stereotype of me, but I, that's, I think, I guess that's how an like, independent candidate will be, because we don't fill in any current political party, so yes, I guess that's a... Okay, um, yeah. maybe to frame things a different way, often a political philosophy kind of acts as a, a guiding principle for yeah. um, a candidate or a board director. It kind mm -hmm. of, um, you know, when new s situations arise, their political philosophy allows them or guides them in choosing the best decision. For example, you know, a left-leaning candidate will choose the most progressive yeah. um, option available to them. A right-wing candidate might choose a more liberal um, or, or further right approach. What is your overarching kind of goal or guiding principle? Is it? It's not a political philosophy. Can you articulate what? What, what's guiding your decision making? Okay, yeah, um, yeah, sorry, I first, I got the the question that you were asking, but yes, I don't have, have like a certain, but um, in that case, I would uh, elaborate a little bit more on my understanding of internationalism, because that's what I, because that's like the background or maybe uh, I'm more aligned with. Mm -hmm. So I think the now our campus we're we're having like the very narrow definition of internationalism. Mm -hmm. So if me as a board of director, I will try to to elaborate this def definition a little bit more because I do believe international is not just one certain group of people. It's about like putting different country, maybe like India, China, Korean, 
Cambodia people all together. That's the right definition of internationalism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so how will that inform your decision making process? Will you be? Are you trying to say that you'll be seeking to prioritize? the interests of international students? No, I think they are both very important. But as one of my policies stated that I will promote like international festivals or like I will promote different religions because I have this idea it's because um, we've all heard the new sad news in like New Zealand and what happened recently in East uh, when Eastwood happened. So the the gone shot. So I I do believe because people having the, the, the horrible things happen in the world, it's because we are lacking of understanding. Mm -hmm. Because di we don't understand different culture, we don't have understand we don't have the understanding on different religion. So I guess there's no regulation or there's no law can bind us to hate each other, but only understanding will bring us like will make us love each other more. Mm -hmm. So that's why I wanna to promote different countries, culture, different religion, and to let people because USU, yes, we are like we have a road to entertain the campus, but we also have a very important road to educate our student. Mm -hmm. So I think this is a very good platform to educate our student. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, in the interest of time, since I think you mentioned you needed to leave. 15, 10 minutes. Yeah, but um, yeah, if you have more questions, that, that's a very good talk. I would like to continue. Uh, we'll just talk about your policies just quickly and then yeah. maybe return to some of the earlier questions. Yeah. Um, so just you, your policies promise um, a few services that are traditionally actually provided by the university. So in the policies you've provided us, you outline your vision for an inter-campus shuttle bus. Yes. Uh, the university already runs a shuttle bus between five routes, yes. including uh, routes to all of the satellite campuses. Mm -hmm. um, so for your policy here, will that bus route be operated by the USU? Will the USU be yep. uh, a bus company now under your vision? No, uh, it's actually, yes, I know we have like the, from Fisher Library to Redfin like that, but I think it's not a, a bus in what we have today. It's more like a electronic one, electronic car. Is that the way for like in play like electronic? Yeah. So it's just basic because I see some people get injured and they can't go to, because now we have like a really big campus from ABS to the new social science building. Mm -hmm. So that's very like far away. But so to have this policy, I just want to perfect the our facility a bit more because now we don't have, what we don't have is like like inter main campus this like small campus of bus but yeah I, I don't I, I won't call it it's a bus it's like a electronic car so it will help other people who can't like who are temporarily like inconvenient to walk to their different campus a different building so yeah sure. uh, so so you mean Intra campus, so like yeah, within main campus. Yes, yeah, sorry, okay. that's probably a better word. Makes sense. Um, yeah. uh, and just on another one of your policies, you outline the promotion of the USU's interfaith committee. Yeah. Um, are you referring to the existing interfaith council? Um, how are you going about promoting the council's work? The council already runs an interfaith festival every year. Yeah. Um, because now I, in I know international festival is like more like a, a big name everybody know, but. For me, for many people that I ask, they don't quite know about, they don't know the existence of the um, interfaith festival. So I think that's what they are. They need to try to work to like make more people join this, because I I don't think it should be just a group of people who are religious trying um, participating in the festival. Should be like more people, even they don't. They are not necessarily religious. They have the interest to know more religion. Yeah, I think that's the why I have this, that policy. Sure. Yeah. Cool. Um, you've spoken to the importance of the CNS program. Mm -hmm. um, on the other hand, if the USU's budget was cut for some reason, what programs would you be looking to take that money from? Oh, that's the question. Actually, Pump asked me as well. Oh, really? Yes. They asking me about to cut like one million from a specific 
program. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, that's the downside to them because uh, I guess it is because I, for me, all the programs are very important and my understanding now is they are giving money to like club and societies and like stuff and shops and cafe mm -hmm. and I think it's very um, reckless to just cut just like cut because they are saying like it's a one million dollar that's that's a lot cut from like one program it will definitely hurt this program mm -hmm. so um, what as a person who studied like bus 1030 a foundation like accounting I would say I need to see the like financial statement and maybe cut everyone a little bit but mm -hmm. I won't just cut one program because I, I assume it will hurt the program. So there's no programs that you see as disposable for the USU? Disposable. Are there any programs that you think uh, the yeah. USU could do without? No. I, no I don't you think they're all necessary? Yeah. Cool. Um, I might move on to a few case studies, historical case studies. Yeah. Um, so I'm not sure if you're aware, but in 2012, the then vice president of the USU, Tom Rowley, leaked confidential documents um, which detailed collaboration between the university and the police to quash student uh, strikes. Um, there was then a lengthy legal battle in the Supreme Court um, because uh, Rowie had broken his fiduciary duty to the USU in leaking those documents to student media. Um, put in a similar situation, or even that exact similar, in that exact situation, um, under what circumstances would you consider breaking your fiduciary duty to the USU? Um, would you, with this specific circumstance, um, in which the, the university had collaborated with police to quash student strikes, would, you, would that be enough for you to leak confidential documents? Um, are there any circumstances in which you would consider leaking confidential documents from the USU? Um, and that sort of how do you how do you um, conceptualize student interest um, in in that context? Well, that's so. Um, just to make sure that I get the story mm -hmm. correct, so he leaked the document and. That's because USU didn't support student strike. Uh, so he and was in his in his role as the vice president. He had access to confidential documents, yeah. which revealed that the university had collaborated with police uh, to quash student strikes, mm -hmm. and then he then used that position to leak those documents to student media, mm -hmm. um, which was a breach of his fiduciary duty yeah. to the USU. Um, because he believed that it was in the student interest for that information to be made public. Um, put in the same situation, would you do the same? Um, are, there any, and are there any situations in which you would consider breaking your fiduciary duty? I first, that, that's the, the first time I heard this story. Mm -hmm. And I think what he did is, is quite something. Mm -hmm. Because that's a very big decision to do. And he's, I think he's putting the student interest for the first, but even though I don't know what the strike was for, mm -hmm. but yeah, I, I assume if they had a strike, so that's represent a group of students' interest and what they want. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I, I don't know if I mean his circumstance. What would I do? Because I also value my, my responsibility to to keep the confidential document. Mm -hmm. I also very value my like responsibility as well mm -hmm. so I I don't I it's it's very hard like hard like dilemma between this but what that he did I I, I would say I really it's very res respectful mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. to putting the student interest in the front yeah cool sure um, so this year the USU agreed to work with the university um, on the university's campaign to crack down on contract cheating, um, especially targeting international students who have used SA help providers in the last year or so. Uh, when is it appropriate for the USU to work with the university on the university's goals? When is the appropriate time? Any time, I guess, to... Okay, uh, so... so when is it appropriate to um, work with the university in a way, you mentioned earlier that you read online that 
the USU is an independent body, that it's student-led and student-run. Yeah. Uh, do you think that working with the university compromises the USU's independence? Oh, okay. That's quite the question. Okay. Mm. Because first, I do believe like having a like a essay writer to write your essay is like a not a very um, academic on its break of brand breach of the academic honesty. Mm -hmm. So I think that's immoral. Mm -hmm. Um. Yes. Yeah, so first, that's that's what I see for that thing. So I think. We, what we are doing is, even though we are like a student organization, what we are doing is also to maintain a like an acro academic atmosphere. So, yes, but yeah, that's that's one issue. That that's contra that's very controversial. Um, sure. So, do you, do you ultimately think? Uh, that working with the university in like that case. But how how would USU, USU work with university? So in this we, case, the USU agreed to give the university online mediums to publish the university's uh, information campaign against students uh, on its social me social media. It agreed to uh, use its email channels to communicate those university messages to students. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a thing that I, 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 I definitely need to give a... I think everyone needs to, on, on the board, I need to give a... Because this is one thing, maybe giving the email to, to do this, like, university advertising is one thing. But what I concern more is, this is a start, maybe then we'll do, like, something more to in the university's favour, mm -hmm. such as, like, anti-strike about what students are doing. So that, that's why I have this like hesitation on doing this thing. But I think maybe not um, universities like um, name or favor, but what we can educate our student on our own is to be like academic honest on this thing. So we can do a, like a self-led campaign to tell student to make to do yeah because that's not just for like student not just for university interest that's for like everyone's interest because we want to have an equal academic environment sure yeah cool um we're kind of approaching an hour um, i don't have too many more sure. questions i might follow up then with um one last question on yeah. um a historical case study it actually is happening right now so uh, panda aligned board director ngs Sun. Uh, has recently missed a number of USU board meetings. Sorry, who? Henji Sun. Yeah, okay. Um, he's missed a number of board meetings. When a board director misses a meeting, they can choose to send in their apologies. Mm -hmm. Their apologies can then be accepted or rejected by the USU board. Yeah. Uh, how would you sort of approach uh, your relationship with board directors who are repeatedly absent if you're elected? Uh, would, would you have, in this specific case, voted to accept or reject uh, Sun's apologies? I guess now I don't have the experience being a board of director, but I have a, an experience being a voter. I think everyone should follow their like have, need to have their like integrity to to maintain what they promised to the voter. So I think as a voter, it's I imagine it's very hard for them to accept people who had promised that he will represent our interest. But now, no longer sitting on the board, no, more, no longer like having the voice for us. So I think as a voter, I, 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 I imagine I will be very upset and even very mad about this. Sure. Yes. Okay. Cool. Um, I might just conclude with one last question, which is just sort of... Yeah, so that's uh, just why I'm hoping this campaign, that all the competent candidate will win, so they, they can represent students better. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, sure. Um, 
we might just finish with one last question. It's really cold here. Yeah, oh, sorry about that. I, um, like my hands are feeling are shaky. This is this is the last question. Then you can get back out into the warmth. Um, how are you feeling about uh, uh, the next couple of weeks? Do you have any major fears? Are you worried at all about uh, any of the other candidates? Any uh, potential preference deals which might be occurring? Um, do you have anything in particular you want to achieve aside from getting elected? Obviously over the next couple of weeks, um, any preference deals you're looking to sign, anything like that? I guess next a few weeks, um, the major thing for me, I would, I would mainly focus on like getting sure, like making sure all the, all my voters know like my policies and what I'm looking at, like doing and what I'm standing for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's the thing, it's very, it's, that, I, I guess that's the the chart part of like this campaign because we don't this uncertainty mm -hmm. that we are not sure like how they will vote for us. But I'll try my best. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Thanks for coming. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, Eric. <laughs>